Welcome to Mogul Talk, where wealth and lifestyle converge. We are mindset <laughs> dealing with business, social relevance, abundance, lifestyle, and spirituality. This is your time. This is your moment. And this is your host, Ms. Mogul, Charity Smith. All right. Hello, everybody. This is a wonderful segment of Mogul Talk. Welcome to this particular segment, you all. Um, I'm really indeed enjoying this entire series all week long. We've been talking to the speakers who will be presenting at the Roar Global Summit. I promised you all that the momentum would accelerate, and I have in the studio with me today the one and the only Dr. Pam Perry. Now, many of you know her as a celebrity public relations expert. Uh, she has helped launch the careers of many people and some very well names, and I'm sure she will name them here. Today, we're going to talk to her about the presentation she's giving at the Roar Global Summit. So as always, I'm going to invite you to get your laptop, get your latte, get your team around this interview. I promise you this maven and this sage of information is going to drop some real nuggets on how to leverage your voice, your brand, and your messaging to catapult you into the decade of achievement. So now without further ado, Welcome to the studio, Dr. Perry. Thank you, Charity. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm well. I am so well. I think I was introduced to you by Rosalind McMillan some years oh. ago, many, yes. many, many years ago. Um, yes. I was working with Former her. Client. On, mm -hmm. Yes. Terry's sister. Working, <laughs> yes, Terry McMillan's sister, right, who is uh, as a renowned author in her own right. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. And I was introduced to your brand when I was interning with Roslyn at that time, had no idea that our paths would cross these years later. I was like, where did I meet her? And it clicked after I spoke with you last night. That's where I met her. That was so, it. And I think that was so long ago that I probably had Roslyn on my space. Okay. So we're dating. Wow. <laughs> yeah, if it's my space. Was, so new to all things social media. Yeah. And I started her out on MySpace. Eventually mm -hmm. she got on Facebook and, you know, we were doing just, you know, just trying to help her with her digital footprint. Yeah, yes, so yes. I remember that. So good. Wow. Yeah. Well, life has a way of bringing purpose back together. And who would have thought all these years later, I would be hosting you for Roar Global. Now for the audience who's listening here, tell us about some of the work and the clients you've worked with. We talked briefly about Rosalind McMillan, but you have certainly been very instrumental in galvanizing what I call black celebrity and some mm -hmm. of the elites in media. <laughs> well, let's just tell it where it is. Some of the elites in media and in various industries Talk to us about how you serve this particular clientele. So, you know, I guess I can break my life up into thirds. I'm 62. So the first 20 years, I guess you would say, really in my career, I worked in PR proper. So I've worked um, as PR director of the Salvation Army. I've worked at the Detroit Free Press. Uh, I've worked at different um, nonprofits, radio stations. I worked at TV stations. So the first 20 years, I guess you would say, basically up until I was about, you know, in my 20s or so, I'm really like working in media. And then the next 20 after that, I was really working from the standpoint of working on Ford Motor Company, McDonald's, uh, Dunkin' Donuts, a lot of national brands and some local uh, furniture stores and things like that. So I was working on like products and mm. nothing wrong with working with products. I really like nonprofits, but what I had to then make at about 40, decide what was it I really, really like to do. Mm -hmm. I had a gift of writing and promoting and actually mm -hmm. doing publicity and media relations. So it's like I've worked in every media. I've worked in radio, TV, and print. I worked with a lot of the brands, Ford Motor Company, McDonald's, and food. And it's like, what is it that I really liked? And then I worked in nonprofit. I said, I really like the Salvation Army for the work that they did. Mm -hmm. And I really like the fact that I could tell good stories of things that were good, right? That's so good. people that were really making a difference. 
And so when I hit about 40, um, I decided that I really wanted to start my own company. And I wanted to work with the clients that I wanted to work with. I wanted to work with those that I call light workers or people who were change makers, world world changers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it could be people like T.D. Jakes or Susan Johnson Cook or uh, just a lot of different people. I don't want to name one and not mm-hmm. just like naming children. It's like, okay, who's your favorite <laughs> child? But I just right. said T.D. Jakes because that was one. Terry um, Rosin was one as well. But mm-hmm. um, Terry Mc. Terry McFadden was another person too. I love Terry McFadden Mm -hmm. as well. I think her and Rosalind were friends. Mm -hmm. Uh, So at that point, I said, I want to work with African-Americans. I want to work with those that are speakers and authors. And that's Mm -hmm. what I built the whole career. So the company was Ministry Marketing Solutions. I worked with a lot of ministers and pastors from the gamut. I guess you would say, you know, from Paul Morton to... Uh, Creflo Dollar, right? I worked with all of them, but those were at the early days in the early 2000s. Those were the main people that were really producing books. Mm -hmm. Regular people weren't producing books yet because self-publishing was not really a thing. Uh, It didn't really become a a big thing until about 2010, Mm -hmm. where self-publishing books was a thing that the average person could do and do well. And so So, at that um, point, I started really working with not just quote unquote celebrities, but people who mm-hmm. want to build a brand. So what I love about what you do is you curate great stories and great storytellers. You help people bring all of this information in years and years of acumen experience and all of that comes into branding. But then we have to kind of distill that branding down into the narrative. How do we take all of this information now and funnel it into the market so instantly the market knows who we are, what we're saying, what we're about, what we deliver, and can instantly connect with us? One thing that I've I've discovered that you're really, really good at, Dr. Perry, is getting the message out in a condensed form. People can kind of connect instantly once they hear what you're about hear what you're talking about it's like aha i feel like i know her already or i've been with her already there is this sense of familiarity now what's great about that is that we only have one time to make a first impression Mm -hmm. and many times people's attention spans especially with everything that's going on now is really short so we have to be skilled at our communications and make an impact very quickly Talk to us a little bit before we go to the break now about how you have moved into the space of authors and speakers, but we all know it's about generating income and sales. How does what you do now help entrepreneurs? And as you said, not just celebrities, but those people who are maybe content creators or masters of their own craft now begin to leverage those stories into repeated sales and revenue. Well, the main thing to charity is that people can't dominate everything. They don't have the marketing budget to dominate everywhere. So I always tell people to pick a niche, pick mm-hmm. a niche. You get rich in a niche. So pick oh, an good. area where you know that you can shine to an mm-hmm. audience. And so it's easier if you know someone to talk to that person versus mm-hmm. someone who you may not know and you're talking general. So the more specific you are about your market, the more you niche down, the more your language will resonate with them and they will feel like they know you because you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. Uh, The person who does that well is a pastor who does that every Sunday, who is preaching to maybe hundreds or even thousands. But when he's preaching, he makes you feel like he's talking to you. That's a skill that they have, a gift that Mm -hmm. God gave them. And the same thing with an with an entrepreneur, author, entrepreneur, speakerpreneur, whatever you want to call it, is that they have figured out who their core audience is, who their target mm-hmm. audience is, know everything about that audience and mm-hmm. speak their language. And that's mm-hmm. really the key. Now you can speak the language, the methods have changed, but the messaging is really the main thing that you have to focus on. You can do it on TikTok, you can do it on Instagram, you can do video, you can do a podcast. It doesn't matter what mm-hmm. method but the messaging has to be the same. And that way, the, 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 the method, whether you're going to use social media or even email copy, Mm -hmm. you're Mm -hmm. talking the language of that audience. And that's really, really key. So many times people want to spread their selves so thin. Well, I want to talk to all women and men 
and kids. Okay, so then that's everybody. You got men, women, and kids. So, you know, like, who, who are you going to pick? The way you talk to a woman is not talk, talk to a man. It is so true. Even the colors that you choose in your content. <laughs> I have on pink. So pink may not be the thing that attracts a male audience, right? Mm -hmm, if I mm -hmm. want to talk to a male audience primarily, I'll probably wear a lot of blues. I may wear, you know, so it just depends. Every brand touch point has a intention. And so, so you he, have to know the audience. This is where I'm glad you said that. Um, I'm going to delay the commercial a bit because you hit on something pivotal. There is a science to this, mm -hmm. right? You started out by saying that you won uh, you get rich in your niche. So for all of you who are writing all of that down, take the note. And by the way, give intellectual property rights, but write that down. You get rich. Oh, I'm a believer in that. You my my rich. coach told me that yeah, many yes. years ago, many you, years ago. It's, it's just a matter of respect. Make sure that you cite properly. Um, but in saying that you get rich in your niche and then you double down in the community communication of that, yes. it's the science of communication as well. That's mm -hmm. what I hear you say. Mm -hmm. Really becoming a student of your market, knowing who they are, yes, the socioeconomical status you want to talk to, um, gender, all of that educational background, cultural background. There are nuances there when we start to spread this conversation out over culture. Mm -hmm. So talk to us very quickly about the science of messaging, because in order for you to get it right and keep it right and really resonate with your audience, there has to be a duplicatable process, a science, there are buzzwords, nuances. How do we then start to craft the science or the recipe of success when it comes to communication? The biggest part of any campaign, whether it is political campaign, an advertising campaign or a PR campaign is the research. So mm -hmm. you'll hear a lot of people talk about market research and they'll do focus groups and they'll, I mean, it's, no car company would do would produce any car unless there is months and months of research, right? They're asking all the questions. And that's like a big, I mean, if you look at market research, that's probably the main thing of how the creative gets done. Mm -hmm. You can't give a creative team uh, direction without doing the research. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can create some stuff, but then it wouldn't hit the mark. So knowing that part, doing the foundational research, doing the market research. Now, before we had to hire a market research company, we had to do focus groups, we had to do all this uh, statistics and analytics of, you know, with market researchers and statisticians, but now we have social media. So you don't have it's to It's on that. demand. It's, it's on demand. You'll know exactly by going into your f Facebook analytics, where your p traffic is coming from. You can go into Google analytics and know where your traffic is coming from, who, who, who that person is, you, their age. I mean, there's so much, you can even do a, a survey on LinkedIn, like ABC. I mean, there's so many ways to do the research, to get to know your audience. You can do mm -hmm. an email and do survey monkey. I mean, there's so much, but you've got to take the time. When mm -hmm. I say take the time, like three or four months of really researching how your audience responds, what it is they're looking for, even the language that they're they're using. Do they like lingo? Do they mm -hmm. like video? Do they listen to podcasts? Are they listening to, you know, what type of podcasts? Are they listening to BuzzFeed or are they watching CNN? I mean, those are just small things that you just mm -hmm. have to understand before you start crafting your messaging, before you start creating all of your marketing materials and the creative that goes along with that. Because if you don't know who you're talking to, like I said, it's, it's, it's the difference between it hitting and missing. Mm -hmm. So if I know charity and it's like, I know charity, I, we went to school together. We, we went to the same church. We actually hang out at some of the same stores. So I know that she hangs out at these stores, goes to this church. So I know something about her. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to write her a letter, I know what kind of things to say, but if I just know that she's a black woman, I don't know where to start to really figure out how to, what are her triggers? What are the things that she likes to hear? But mm -hmm. the more I know about them, the easier it is for me to communicate with them. And this that's why I said that's important. It really is. This is but, good. Yeah. So let's take this commercial break. When we come back, I want to now catapult this conversation forward into the conference and the sales generation piece, because you said something very pivotal. You said that if we do not craft the right message, we will hit or miss. That essentially translates into revenue 
or no revenue. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. So let's take this very quick, quick commercial break. When we get back, let's now delve into what is uh, the end result of all of this research and crafting the right message. And how do we do that now to create our own economies? You all stay tuned. We'll be right back. There we go. We are back. <laughs> hey. So before we went to commercial break, we were talking about how the right messaging translates into sales and revenue and truly creating a brand. And I think what people miss, Dr. Perry, a brand really is a system of creating income and money. A brand just isn't the right pictures. It's not just the pretty makeup. What a brand does is create business and systems of business. That's really what a brand does. So in the conference, I want to kind of dive into that. You will be talking to us about how do we now take what you know about PR and messaging and now create a system of sales and revenue to do what we're talking about this year is closing the economic achievement gap. How do we leverage PR and our messaging to now get that service, that product out to the masses and now start to create real economic possibilities. Talk to us about, pardon me, how the right messaging then connects with revenue and sales. So one of the main things of any sale, people will buy things that not necessarily what they need, but what they want. <laughs> So it's just true. I mean, people buy what they want, not what they need. They may need certain things, but I'm going to buy what they want. The one is always stronger. So mm -hmm. what really creates desire? And I really say it's like a formula. It's, I learned this in school and I always just go back to it. It's called the ADA method, uh, A-I-D-A. And it's okay. about getting the attention first, getting them interested, creating desire so they take an action. And so when we're we're talking about that, one of the main things in, in order to get their attention, you have to be interesting. But in order for them to be interested, you have to really get them to understand that you know them, like them, and trust them and get them to know, like, and trust you. They call it the know, like, and trust factor. So sales are base, basically based on that. Once you get their attention, then they have to decide, hmm, okay, now I kind of got their attention, but do I know, like, and trust them? And that's what a brand does. A brand really creates that trust factor. I trust a Rolls Royce. I may not necessarily trust a Kia, right, in terms of safety. Uh, just from the standpoint of how they've always just delivered their brand messaging and how they've always positioned themselves in the market. So a brand will make it easy for you to make a sale. When you have a brand name, it's easier to sell to people because they know, like, and trust you versus someone who doesn't have a brand name. Now you've got to build the brand so I can know, like, and trust you. That's all it is. That branding just really shortens the cycle for the sale. 
if someone was picking a publicist, a publicist they know or a publicist they don't know. So um, one of my mentors in um, PR was Terry Williams. Terry Williams was uh, out of New York. She wrote the book called The Personal Touch. I suggest everybody get it. It's probably about 20 years old, but it's a really, really good book. And Terry has worked with people from Janet Jackson to Miles Davis to basketball celebrities, like real celebrities, like that's, she's in New York. So she worked with all the celebrities, Mary J. Blige did the four for her book and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things that she really talks about is that all of the people that she works with have brand names. It's easier for them to get in the media, to actually get sales because they are a brand name, but how do they get a brand name? That's what people have to work on. They can't Mm -hmm. expect the same, the same type of media exposure than say T.D. Jakes gets if they're just starting out. It took him a while to really consistently get that. Uh, Terry McMillan, if we mention her name, has a lot of cachet in it. And so much so that people know the McMillan name, which is why people know Rosa McMillan as Terry's sister, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, even even so when people uh, meet my husband, his name is Mark. And he says, hi, you know, Mark Pierce says, oh, Mark, where do I know you from? And they'll say, uh, my wife's name is Pam. Oh, yeah, Pam Perry. And Mr. Pam Perry. <laughs> right. And it's just kind of like because his brand is not as known, mm. because he's not as active, he's not delivering as much content. He does a lot of corporate things. So he doesn't have to be on social media mm-hmm. uh, because he's not in PR. He's actually in advertising. Advertising is more like media buying and that sort of thing. But the point of it is, is that you need a brand that is consistent clear position right for people to buy from you Mm -hmm. it's the difference between a purse that's a regular purse versus a coach purse or a fendi purse or a tory birch purse you're going to go for the brands it's not that one is more expensive it's just been positioned differently in the market and and their messaging is different and isn't there just kind of this intuitive expectation that with the brand that's more known, you're going to get more of what you desire yes. and what you kind of bank on. You just kind yes. of innately put that value in the brand because yes. you've heard it so much. Right. Exactly. So, Dr. Dr. Parrott, we're getting to a close and I figured our time would go quicker than I wanted it to or than I anticipated that it would. But you said something at the top of the show that I want to go back to in our close. You said that you really like working with people, particularly with the Salvation Army, because of their messaging and their impact on lives. In closing, tell us the importance of a well-crafted message making a big impact. How do we now craft the message so that it goes beyond the selling of products and services and really resonate with the heart, which goes into that trust factor? How do we do that in closing? It really goes back to your why. And I did a blog about this not too long ago. Like, what is your why? What is the main reason why you do it? So a lot of times people will come to me and they'll want to get known and get out there because they want to, what I call, be famous. And I call that, that deals with the ego. That just deals with them. I just want to be known. I just want to be seen. And that's not a big enough why. That's not going to affect anybody Mm -hmm. other than you. When there's a why that's bigger than you, meaning that you're going to impact people not only now, but in the future and future generations, you're leaving a legacy. Those are what I call light light workers, right? Those are people who are sharing their light because they're, there's a, a purpose or a God-given message inside of them that they know that is bigger than them. Mm-hmm. And if it's bigger than you, those are the people that I enjoy working with. Those are the people that have the authenticity that can really come forward. If it's just ego marketing, you can tell it's shallow, it's flat. It doesn't really go anywhere. There's no traction. But when there's a movement, uh, when there's a message that really is beyond. So someone who really wants to genuinely help people, someone who really wants to enlighten people. Dr. Miles Monroe is one of my clients. Um, his Love soul him. rests in heaven. Yeah. And, and he was, I mean... To this day, his work still speaks, right? Yes, he's an excellent example of that. Oh yes. my God, it, it's it's like he's gone. He died tragically. Him and his wife in a airplane mm-hmm. crash um, many years ago. But he was about purpose. He talked about mm-hmm. purpose all the time, mm-hmm. and yes. and he could hold down a conference like he could be the only conference speaker for four hours, and you would not be bored because mm-hmm. he was so on point and on purpose. All of his books were just really 
amazing. And so it wasn't never about Dr. Miles. It was mm-hmm. about the legacy he he left. Absolutely. And, uh, that that's that's like a, a good example of someone who is like really um, making sure that their message makes a difference. Mm-hmm. It's like after you're gone, what are people going to say? I That's mean, cool. like, oh, she had a pretty Instagram or she really made a difference in my life. So, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so it's the difference between ego marketing and really marketing with the message. So it sounds like to me, the best branding and the best marketing comes not only from research and authenticity, but connecting purpose to what you do. Yes. It kind of really does go far beyond the day-to-day logistics, but it goes into that whole cause arena, right? Why do you do, as you said, what's your why? What's the connection to that? What Dr. makes you Perry, tick? Mm-hmm. There you go. What makes you tick? I love it. Mm-hmm. Dr. Perry, you're making an appearance at the Roar Global Summit. You will be sharing with audiences on various continents and time zones, how they can take their research their product, their service, their authenticity, and now bring cause to it to leverage it into sales, revenue, and branding. Talk to us about what one good thing, one thing that listeners can take away when they attend your presentation at Roar. What can they expect to hear? They're going to hear, they should take notes. I talk yes. fast. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time, so I want to try to get it in. Yes. Uh, one of the main things is just really a listing of the things that make up the recipe, I guess you would say, for a seller brand. They're going to know, like, what are the what are those top 10 things, at least 10, I think I went through about a little bit, I think I'll go through more if I can, that will make a stellar brand that will help them get more sales, grow their business, and really get PR. Mm-hmm. And so I go through all of the steps of that. I guess you would say, you know, I put it all in the mixing bowl and I'm stirring it up. But they, if they can really take those nuggets that I give them and really apply them to their current strategy, that is, those are the things that will move their brand forward and really help them with the business growth. Mm. We are honored to host you. We're delighted. Like I said, it's been years in the making, but so thrilled to have you with Roar. Listen, everybody, if you have not done so, make sure if for no other reason you attend this summit, you need to hear what she has to say about marketing, about messaging, about research. What is the recipe of success? We're not just balling something up, throwing it at the market and hope it sticks. What I'm hearing her say is that there is a methodology to the success of this. And once you master the method, you master then the sales and the revenue aspects of that. So again, Dr. Perry, thank you again for joining me. I appreciate you more than you know. Thank all of you for watching. Make sure you tune in for another segment. We're going higher and higher and higher. Thank you all for watching. And thank you again to my guest, Dr. Perry. Bye-bye for now. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Connect with us on our fan page on Facebook. Master your morning with Ms. Mogul and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mogul Life TV. And visit our website, you can create your own economy.com and mommy's creating economies.com.